One small piece of plastic and two lines of G-code is all it took to fix the biggest issue I've been having with my Prusa XL. In this video, I'm going to tell you how I took my prints from bad to good and from good to great. This video will be especially useful to you if your prints look like this. But it may also be helpful if your prints look like this. Because if we take a closer look, the same issues I've been experiencing with my printer are present here too. They're just not as severe. To be specific, I'm referring to layer banding, whether prominent or subtle. On my 5-tool Prusa XL, three of my tools were suffering from prominent banding, while the other two had a minor case of it. Note the past tense. That's because after extensive troubleshooting, I was able to pinpoint the root cause of inconsistent layer stacking and come up with a solution to eliminate it. This was not the video I intended to make, but it may just be the most valuable one I've made so far. If you're new here, this is part five of my Prusa XL series. In the first two parts, we built a five head fully assembled unit and a two head semi assembled unit. We compared the differences and concluded on whether or not the fully assembled was worth the extra cost. It wasn't. In part three, I talked about some of the issues I had in my early testing, most notably prominent stringing. Then in part four, we had a look at the new input shaping alpha firmware, which seemed to remedy many of the early issues. Speeds were increased and stringing was reduced. And finally, I got a benchy that looked half decent. My plan from there was to get more ambitious, to really put the printer through its paces. To start experimenting with long, multicolor prints with hundreds or thousands of tool changes. And to experiment with different material combinations. Unfortunately, this video isn't that. My ambitions were stifled when issues started to arise. What follows is the story of my exploration and how I came to the solution that solved all of my problems. If you're crunched for time and just want the answer, feel free to skip ahead using the time codes in the video description. My first test print after filling my quota of benchies was this five color tiki mask by Chelsea Creates Things. Besides the white tower losing adhesion, the print completed successfully. At face value, it's a nice looking print. However, upon closer inspection, we can see significant layer banding. Interestingly, this banding is most severe when the green of tool four enters the print. The next test was this Bama model by Chaos Cortec. I used all five tools for this print, four with PLA and the fifth with PETG for the support material. This time, tool four was loaded with light blue PLA. Surprisingly, the same phenomena was present as on the Tiki mask. Significant banding was present in the print up until the point when tool four was no longer being used. The white tower also detached in this print. Because PLA and PTG don't stick very well to each other, the stability of the white tower is compromised when these materials are mixed. To overcome this, we can assign a white tower extruder, which will force a particular extruder to be used for the outer shell of the white tower, enhancing its stability. For test three, I applied this change in addition to removing tool four from the print entirely. The white tower completed successfully this time around. The prominence of banding was also greatly reduced in the absence of tool 4, but the layers were still far from perfect. The white tower in particular, with the outer shell of PTG from tool 5, exhibited heavy banding. On the bright side, the PTG supports removed easily and left a very clean surface on the underside of the print. So with the results so far being suboptimal, I decided to do some troubleshooting before wasting more filament. The most logical step was to verify belt tension. Prusa has a handy procedure for this. They have a web app that uses the microphone on your smartphone to measure the frequency response of the belts when plucked. My belts measured ever so slightly tight, so I loosened them to bring the frequency into the optimal range. In addition to the frequency test, Prusa also provides pre-sliced G-code for a homing test tower. This should reveal if the layer shifting is a result of loose belts. The result was flawless with a single tool. In fact, all of the single tool prints I have done so far have looked great. It's not a belt tension issue, so it must be a tool changing issue. In order to confirm this, I developed a simple test. These stacked cubes will show how layer quality changes with and without tool changing. The bottom two rows will be our baseline without tool changing. The top two will show us how the layer quality is affected when tool changing is involved. 
As suspected, the layers look much worse when tool changing. I then did a full tower test of all five tools. Tools four and five in pink and blue are the most inconsistent, but the other tools are pretty bad too. In order to further diagnose the issue, I watched intently as the tools were picked and parked by the tool changing mechanism. Upon closer inspection, I noticed that in some cases, the front of the tool wasn't perfectly parallel to the back of the tool changing mechanism. A small adjustment by hand and the tool recenters itself, finding an equilibrium point at which it is more stable. Aha, a theory emerges. The problematic tools aren't perfectly parallel in the docks, causing them to be picked at an angle. At some point in the print, the tool moves, changing the position of the nozzle and causing a small layer shift. All right then, let's redo the dock calibration and see if that solves the problem. This procedure is part of the machine assembly. We remove the two pins, then loosen the screws on the side of the dock. This gives the dock, and therefore the tool, a rotational degree of freedom about the x-axis. We then bring the tool changing mechanism into place and tighten the screws to lock the position of the dock. This time, I was careful not to push the mechanism into the tool in order not to skew its position. With this procedure repeated on all tools, I ran another test burn. The results were improved considerably, but still showed evidence of layer shifting. A closer look revealed that the tools still weren't perfectly parallel to the tool changing mechanism when picked. Unfortunately, the dock calibration procedure does not provide a rotational degree of freedom about the y-axis, so this cannot be easily corrected. So here's the solution I came up with. I'm able to move the tool by hand and have it recenter itself, from which point it is stable. Therefore, if I can get the tool to bump into the gantry during tool changing, this should correct the position and eliminate the layer shifts. A few minutes in CAD and I had a prototype. I applied an adhesive back mounting square, then stuck it onto the frame of the printer. In the slicer, I added two lines to the tool change G-code to force the tool to hit this bump block before returning to the print. All right. The moment of truth. Let's see if it works. Would you look at that? Perfectly stacked layers. As a reminder, this is what they looked like before. The results really are night and day. So there you have it, a simple solution to a complex problem. Maybe now I can start to have fun with this thing. I hope you found this video informative or at least entertaining. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. All of the files I developed in this process including the bump block and the tool change tower test will be available at the links in the description. If you decide to use these, I'd be really interested to hear your results. So please share them in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Taylor, this is YGK3D, and until next time, happy banding free 3D printing.